Okay, in this video we are going to go through the process of writing 4 sine theta plus 3 cos theta in the form r sine theta plus alpha. Now there's a couple of restrictions before I start. Usually r is taken to be positive and alpha is taken to be acute. Okay, so alpha is going to be between 0 and pi over 2, or 90 degrees. Okay, so let's say we want alpha to be in radians for this one. Now, this isn't always the case, but traditionally, that's what we look for. So, how do we go about this? Well, what we're going to do is we're going to write 4 sine theta plus 3 cos theta as r sine theta plus alpha. Okay? Now, if we just look at the sine theta plus alpha, this is effectively what we have in this top line of the compound angle formula. It's just instead of the phi, I've got alpha. So this is actually r lots of sine theta cos alpha. Now, because that's a plus, this must be a plus. So plus cos theta sine alpha. OK? Now, I'm going to multiply through by the r. And I'm also going to reorder the elements, the terms, in order to have something sine theta plus something cos theta. The reason why will become apparent. So I'm going to have r cos alpha sine theta. So I've got something sine theta plus r sine alpha, cos theta. So I have something cos theta. Now, if I now compare this with this, I have something sine theta and 4 sine theta. So those two somethings, the r cos alpha and the 4, must be the same. And so I can write down this equation. Also, the r sine alpha, the something in front of the cos theta, must be the same as the 3. So what is in front of the cos theta here must be what is in front of the cos theta here. So r sine alpha must be 3. OK? And that is me using the compound angle formulas to set up these two equations. OK, so I'm just going to get rid of this so I've got a little bit more space. So I've now got two equations. Equation 1 and equation 2. And I have two unknowns. I have r and alpha to find. So, first of all, I'm going to find alpha. And I can do this quite easily by taking equation 2 and dividing by equation 1. It's kind of similar to the technique that you would work with in uh, sequences and series, with geometric sequences, when you were dividing one nth term by another. So we have r sine alpha over r cos alpha is equal to 3 over 4. Now the r's, they cancel. And you're left with sine alpha over cos alpha, which is tan alpha, is equal to 3 quarters. So now what I can do is I can solve that equation. Now remember, we're working in radians for this one. So turn your calculator into radians. Inverse tan of 3 quarters, and that's 0 0.644 to 3 decimal places. So 0 
Okay, so that's my alpha. I now need to find uh, R. Now, you can do this in one of two ways. Okay? Now, the both of these ways, I suggest rearranging these equations. Rearrange the first one to get cos alpha equals, so that would be 4 over r. And rearrange the second equation to get sine alpha equals. So it would be 3 over r. Now, the first way is to use the fact that sine squared plus cos squared is 1. So, sine squared is 3 over r squared, and cos squared is 4 over r squared. So we get 9 over r squared plus 16 over r squared is 1. And so, 9 plus 16 is 25, so we have 25 over r squared is 1. And so r must be equal to, well, r squared is 25, so r is the square root of 25, but r has to be positive, so r must be 5. Okay? Now that's one possible way. You can use sine squared plus cos squared is 1. Now you don't have to do it that way. Um, another way of getting there is to draw a right angle triangle. So... Drawing a right angle triangle where this angle is alpha, then cos of alpha is adjacent over hypotenuse, so adjacent must be 4 and hypotenuse must be r, and sine alpha is opposite over hypotenuse, so the opposite must be 3 and once again the hypotenuse is r. And then you can just use Pythagoras on this, so r squared is 3 squared plus 4 squared, so r squared is 25, so r must be 5. A 3, 4, 5 triangle. So either of those two methods works fine. So we now have r, we've got alpha, and so we can write 4 sine theta plus 3 cos theta as 5 sine of theta plus... 0.644, three decimal places. So this means that the curve has been stretched parallel to the y-axis by factor 5 and translated uh, by the vector minus 0 0.6440. Okay? So in other words, it's been stretched, so it's now going through 5 and minus 5, and it has been... Uh, moved to the left by 0.644. Okay, so that's the process that we need to work through.